I couldn't be prouder to introduce the woman, Steve, that's going to help you win and is going to help you serve and uh, is, is just going to be there to help keep you balanced through a really tough process in Washington. But the two of you together are going to help fix what's broken in Washington and are going to fight for the 3rd Congressional District every day. Alicia Pesco. Good morning, everyone. I want to first of all thank everyone for being here today and taking time out of your busy schedule. Um, I have the distinct pleasure and honor to introduce to you a man that I've known for 23 years. <clears throat> Through good times and bad, we've taken those roads together. And I can only tell you this, he is the most honest, person I know. He is a person that is there for everyone, whether you're his friend, whether you're a worker, a co-worker, a neighbor, anyone in the community. You make the phone call and he's there. He will try to help you. It doesn't matter if you are a D or an R or what party you're affiliated with. He's about people. He's about working. He's the voice for all of us. He is probably, has made me a better person. And I say that because he will keep you in line. <laughs> He's a good listener. He's my best friend. He's the love of my life. And he will be a hard worker for all of us. And I'm asking you at this time to please support Steve. And I introduce to you the next U.S. Congressman, Steve Pascal. It's going to be pretty hard to, uh, to beat that. Alicia, Mark, Roy, Brandon, uh, thank you all uh, very much. And I just want to take a moment just to thank all of you uh, that are here. When I look uh, around this room and I see so many friends that go back so many years, Jim Talon and I were elected uh, together uh, to the State House of, uh, uh, to the County Commission back in 1992. I take a look at uh, Dick Bukowski. I remember sitting with, with him over my living room back in 2002, talking with him about uh, running for uh, the county commission. I remember seeing Owen Bieber uh, at a Chinese restaurant back in 2000, discussing whether or not Debbie Stabenow was going to be able to, uh, to win. Uh, Ken Shepard has been with me for you know so many years. He's such a great friend. Uh, my sister Linda. Uh, and I, I don't ever want to forget somebody who probably has been with me and has been a supporter uh, longer than almost anybody, and that's Ed Kettle. Uh, the first day uh, that I announced back in 1988 that I wanted to run for the county commission, uh, I got a call from a person I had heard of but never really met, and that person was Ed Kettle, and he came over uh, that evening, and I don't think there's ever been a time that uh, I needed to have something done that Ed wasn't there to help me out. So, Ed, thank you for everything you've done, and I just want to say very briefly, I think that we have put together the best campaign team that this community uh, has ever seen for a congressional race. Uh, and I've been involved with a few of them. Uh, David Legrand, Phil Skaggs, uh, uh, Brandon, uh, all, all of you who have done you know, so much uh, to help uh, in terms of planning this. Because uh, I'll tell you, it took a little while uh, to get me at a place uh, where I was uh, agreeable to doing this. But having said that, uh, I'm here today at this time and at this place to announce my candidacy for the 3rd District of Michigan for the United States Congress. <laughs> this has not been an easy decision, and I know that this will not be an easy race. Frankly, I have a good life. Reward, a rewarding work, a wonderful family, and time to enjoy the things that I enjoy most in life. But after long reflection and the urging of good friends and community leaders, I have decided to accept this challenge. I have chosen to announce at this location for reasons that are very meaningful to me. 
this property, this development was all built by uh, my father and my sister's father, Linda. 60, uh, 66 years ago, my father, Henry Pesca, came to the United States alone, a victim of one of uh, humanity's greatest crimes, penniless, unable to speak English, and a witness to immense human suffering. Yet with the help of others in a nation that offered opportunity, a reward for hard work, and a fair shake, he built all of this and much more. His life inspired me to work hard, but also to contribute. As a young man right out of law school, I became an assistant prosecuting attorney, later a Kent County Commissioner, state representative, and Kent County Circuit Court judge. I thought my service was over, but the events of the last few years convinced me that these are serious times that require serious people to put forth the extra effort to return our nation to the greatness we once knew. Let me state without equivocation that I reject the notion that our best days are behind us, that our hopes will not be fulfilled and our dreams cast aside. We have, we have come much too far as a people to ever accept anything other than a much brighter future. Obviously, I am not presumptuous enough to believe that my election to Congress could solve all of these ills. I do believe that I bring the following to the race. A record of achievement, the ability to move beyond partisan bickering to do good for our community, a mainstream record, and most, and most importantly, the ability to work with others. I have spent my life in West Michigan. My wife, Alicia, and I have raised our family here. In my life, I have seen great progress in human rights, in freedom, in justice, but much more needs to be done. Our great middle class needs to be strengthened. Seniors need to be assured, and young people need to have their hopes restored. Our current congressman is a bright, sincere, hardworking individual. Unfortunately, he subscribes to a narrow, rigid, inflexible ideology which has restrained him from doing all he can for the best interest of our community. His approach, if implemented into policy, would, in my view, invite chaos. His foreign, his foreign policy views predate Franklin Delano Roosevelt, and his domestic policy views predate Theodore Roosevelt. <laughs> we have moved much too far as a people to go back to a time of less justice, less freedom, and less equality. I pledge that this will be a campaign of ideas, not personalities. Voters in the 3rd District will have an opportunity to choose between two very different approaches to governance. It is my hope that our campaign will restore faith in what our politics should be rather than what it has become. My pledge is this, to work hard, to use my experience in government and business to move forward, and to always put West Michigan citizens first. But Before I close, I just want to make reference to something that uh, uh, always stood in my mind. As many of you know, I was basically out of the political sphere for many years when I served, uh, and very honored to serve as a Kent County Circuit Court judge. And I was so happy back in uh, uh, November of 2008, I got a call from my dear friend Mark Schauer. I was actually uh, in Florida, and he said to me, I'll, I'll never forget, he said, Steve, you would love it here. The sense of history that exists when you walk up the steps of the Capitol, when you're in Washington. When I, was, when I was there, I just kept thinking of you and how you would feel about this. And even at that point in time, I wasn't really thinking about ever running for Congress. In fact, if somebody who asked me four months ago, I probably wasn't thinking, in fact, I know I wasn't thinking about it at all. But what Mark said sort of engendered a thought in my mind. Maybe there's a chance someday that it could happen. Now is that time. I pledge to you that if you support me, I'll work hard, I'll stand up for our beliefs here in West Michigan, and thank you all so much for coming here today. I can't tell you how much Alicia and I appreciate it. Thank you.